Hello everyone, welcome back to Rollercoaster Icon 3, and today I'm going to work on this building right here, which doesn't exist yet, but it will in the near future. And you may notice, while watching this episode, that some things have changed in the Let's Play Park. And I'm going to confess, I have actually worked in this park without actually recording it. I said that I would record everything for my Let's Play, but that just didn't happen for a number of reasons. First of all, there is the fact that my computer was loaded with files and I didn't really have space anymore to record more. And I also didn't want to wait to commentate over that and render it so I could remove it and make space. So I was just like, YOLO, we're just going to do this without recording. And then there was the fact that um, it was just kind of that type of work in the game which I don't think is really fit for time lapses. I mean the main reason that I'm doing these time lapses is of course that well it's much faster otherwise the gameplay in Roller Coaster Kin 3 would be even more boring and that wouldn't be great but it also means that you know it's cool to see their progress on buildings and things like that but the issue with that is sometimes you build things that aren't really cool to see progress or it takes a very long time to see the progress like recoloring things or exp experimenting with certain sets things like that is definitely something I would um, at least try to not time lapse and what I did is mainly something that I've been planning to do in this park for quite a while, but only now got to because, you know, I'm entering the stage of the park where I'm trying to finish everything, and that is just go um, to places all over the park, look for things that I think are unfinished, or that I can, or that I think I can add something to in the meantime, since I've got new sets, and new knowledge, and yeah, things like that. So, what I did, for example, was I went to the castles near the entrance and added some um, small details to that, especially on the towers, like those golden balls and sexy things. Because, you know, it's a fantasy castle after all, I can just go overboard with that. But I'm still not too sure if in the future I want to feature this in time lapses, which I probably won't do, or if I'm going to do something with it that I'm just going to completely skip it and only do it in my um, live streams, because I work on this park mostly in my live streams. And um, the last option, which is something that I'm probably going to do, is to have some real life episodes. I mean, real time episodes. Every time I say real life. Um, now, that may seem a bit weird because that is not really the entire idea of this series. But then again, it's something that I've done with the layouts of my roller coasters. And for some reason, those real time episodes um, are the episodes that most people watch. At least they have the um, highest amount of viewers. And I figured, you know what? I haven't really done too much real-time video stuff in Rollercoaster Second 3, so it might also be cool to just hear my thoughts um, as I build things, because it is definitely a lot different to commentate over something um, after you've done it. Also, it's kind of easier for me. It is definitely easier, I must say, to just commentate over things that you're doing at the moment while you're doing it, because at that point, you know, you get all, all those thoughts about it and you can just throw out your thoughts, when if you're commentating over pre-recorded footage, it, you definitely you know, need to keep thinking about things to say and um, what is actually relevant in the case of the video that you're watching. And in this case, that would be this small building over here, which is kind of like a mirror image of the building on the other side of the facade of the, what do you even call that thing? That pirate ship that also rotates. It's for children anyway, but I like those things. Um, it has the same kind of style with those pillars and everything, but as you can see, definitely using other sets, although there is something about Ralphie's pillars and that small, I don't even know what it is kind of thing from um, Boy Blue set. Because you have those pillars from Ralphie and you can just add the Boy Blue kind of brown thing to it, which almost makes it seem like a fancier pillar, but in reality it is not even a pillar. But these pillars are um, Shy Guy's Main Street pillars just because they, you know, they're different. I'm trying to feel like... Um, and there is at least some kind of difference between architecture, even if it looks kind of the same in shape and size. I, I do want to have some variation in it. And also there is the fact that more and more I'm starting to feel like Ralphie's um, antique world is starting to get overused. Because seriously, when I was building Verona Valley, rarely anyone was using it. And if people were using it, they were often using it wrong, including me. Um, <laughs> because... No, I have the gymnasium in Dutch, in Dutchland, which has like, which comes with the study of classical architecture, at which point I realized that everyone's idea, at least my idea and people I know's ideas, were actually wrong about classical architecture because there's a very strict hierarchy and um, rules that you have to 
abide to when it comes to building those buildings, which is possible within Ralphie's antique world, but rarely anyone really does it. Even the preview um, screens of Ralphie's antique world don't strictly follow the rules of classical architecture. And uh, that's something you don't necessarily need to do, but it's just something that I, I noticed. And now that Ralphie's set is getting used, people are at least using it in the right way, I guess. But you know, it's, it's still something, I, I don't hate it because it's overused, and that would be a very hipster-ish approach, not that anything's wrong with that per se, I guess it's just a natural thing to do, but um, that's not the main reason, it's mainly about the fact that if people overuse something in Rollerco Second 3, you're gonna notice it much more. It's gonna be almost immersion breaking. You can have immersion in Rollerco Second 3. You can truly be, um, well, inspired is not the right word, but truly feel like you're in a park or wish to be there or, or truly feel overwhelmed by what somebody's built. But it really works better if you don't really recognize the sets. And if somebody uses the same set over and over again, that so many people are also using, which is Ralphie's Antique World at some point. Um, you know, you can, you just recognize the pieces, you just recognize the things that they've done, and to me that is almost ruining the experience. I mean, if, if, if somebody builds a beautiful building using the set, I, I can still recognize that, but th there's just something immersion breaking about the fact that you recognize the pieces and recognize the fact that everybody's using those pieces at the moment. So that is also why sometimes I like to resort to underground sets that rarely, but rarely anyone uses that aren't that great as opposed to using great sets that everyone uses because, you know, something just seems to be wrong sometimes about using sets that are just so common that you recognize them instantly and recognize the fact that they are so commonly used. Now this building over here is made up of mm, not really too overused sets but then again they're pretty common seriously but um, I did like the mixture of sets in that particular building. It has the pillars from Main Street set as I said. Um, it uses that I, d I still don't even know what it's called, but that triangular kind of dirt patch thing, I don't even know what it's supposed to be used for, from Boy Blue, and then there are some random things from the Western set as well. And I must say that Station Gym's Western sets, um, I think, I don't really know the exact name, but that just might be the name. At least it's a good enough description, I guess. They, they really have some awesome pieces that go so well together with the Alpine sets, even the walls, because they have that same kind of stucco texture that actually does fit with the Alpine sets. And of course, that's the bell tower, which is pretty damn sexy. But the cornices are also something that you can't miss about that set. It's really amazing. And it can be used for so many more things than just Western sets, um, than just Western scenery, I mean. And this bell tower... It's really just a simple bell tower. Um, these buildings on the side, I'm going to be honest, these buildings on the side over here are just facades to kind of fill up this area even more because I was trying to get that kind of city idea. So I wanted to at least uh, surround this square by buildings all around. But if you're surrounding a square with buildings, what you often have in real life, you'll have... Uh, most of the buildings are filler buildings and then you'll have some buildings that really stand out and that just um, gain your attention. But you would want to have some kind of filler buildings around that, which is kind of what's happening over here. The carousel building is obviously the most detailed and most classically themed building over here, and definitely the center of attention of this square. But, you know, you, you do want to have some of those alpine buildings on the sides, so, you know, it's, it's not completely empty. You don't want to really have a square like this in the middle of a forest. That wouldn't make too much sense, at least not in this context. So... Yeah, honestly, these buildings are just kind of filler. Trying to make them look as good as I can with the least effort. Well, that's not really the word. Um, you know, well, yeah, I guess I could actually say it like that, to be honest. Sometimes I'm lazy, okay? Um, I, I did want to go for the least effort in this case. But I, I also didn't want to make it look too, you know, standard. So using loads of pieces from different sets, the arches over um, at the bottom are from my Alpine set thing. I don't even know what my own set is called. And the arches on top of that are from Ralphie's and then there's Coconut's arches. So in the arches alone, there's a lot of variation in this building, but it's definitely something um, that I've done before because all of the sets used in this building have been used throughout the park. This is honestly just a kind of fill up building it's nothing too special and the bell tower is simply there because you know every every town needs a kind of bell slash church tower and you know this building serves that function i guess 
and pretty well. I still want to look at those flowers, because there might be uh, an overload of flowers over there. And they're not really the most creative flowers. It's really just the flower sets that everybody uses in a random order. Which, I don't know if that's a too good idea. I kind of want to get into that entire thing of flower arranging. And I know this sounds incredibly stupid and like I'm 70 year old and... Um, but, I, I, you know, it's something that really appeals to me for some reason. It's something I've never tried. And you can actually create really awesome figures with flowers. So I want to give that a try. But anyway, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, I am probably going to do that real-time episode in which I'm just going to run over the park, look at details, and probably say a lot of things about the park and, you know, just kind of review it before we actually get to finish it, add some details to it, and then record a video, which is going to happen at a much later stage because there is so much to be done still. So I'll see you then.